All right, folks, welcome to the First of Frame Rate Show. I am Via Baller. This is episode 338. Yes, and today is draft day, and uh, I want to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on what this draft means for GM Terry Fontenot and Coach Arthur Smith. I think this is a really big deal, and this is something that uh, I want to share my thoughts and opinions on. If you guys don't mind, if you want to give me some feedback, please do. You can find me on Twitter at Via Baller. Or you can check me out at the Discord. The Discord will be down in the description. Or you can comment in the comment section or give me some feedback on uh, Apple Podcast Avenue. If this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, this is the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. Once again, we talk about George Southern Atlanta Falcons football. I am, you can find me on YouTube and Rumble. Also, you can find me on Anchor Stitcher, Spotify, apple and a google podcast and last but not least if you want to donate you can go ahead and hit the links down in the description and they have plenty of avenues to do so all right let, let, let's get into this now i talked about a couple of uh scenarios pretty much one scenario which was uh round one through three and four through six because i don't think we have a seventh round pick so i want to tie that all in together with this episode and let you guys know what those picks that I thought that they may make was somewhat of an impromptu mock draft. What do I think that this means for these two guys on the screen here? If you're watching on YouTube or Rumble, you can see the picture of Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith. Um, the first pick, probably the first two picks, you you you're gonna um know what direction this team is going in for the future. Um. Even with all these signings that we got in free agency, it didn't really tell us much. I felt that we were uh, just filling a lot of, you know, holes as far as depth or whatever the case may be. I think there was like maybe one or two picks that I, that we picked up that I knew that was something that was somewhat of a splash. But for the most part, all these other picks were just needs. And that's not a bad thing because these are teams, you know, these are positions that we need to work on. And it is not a big deal. Uh, but what I will say, last year draft was just, uh, you know, okay, we're just going to pick some guys and we're going to try to fill in some holes and get these guys better for the next season. And for the most part, that team was not Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot's team. These are, they, I mean, it was their team, but it wasn't the makeup that they want. After one year under the belt and then you go into the next season, now we're starting to see, okay, now we're starting to get the makeup of this team. I think it's going to be a little bit bigger, uh, a, a bigger emphasis on these picks that we have. And uh, I think it's something that we need to pay attention to. I think it's something that we're going to be able to uh, put on a microscope to actually say, okay, these guys are actually trying to go in this direction go in that direction and that's one reason why i put up a, a, a various amount of scenarios because at the end of the day all of us who do this stuff whether it be small media or big media we don't know what these guys are going to who they're going to be picking there may be some leaks later on down the road i mean later on today but for the most part we don't know we just don't so um that's why i did the scenarios and i felt like it's a passing league it is a quarterback driven league um, and I don't think the quarterback that they want is right here. So I think they'll probably go receiver. I'm leaning more towards receiver than I am pass rush. And I know that's not a very popular opinion, but the more I think about it, that's the way I feel. That doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, tear the, tear the world up if they don't, or they pick a pass rusher or anything. That came. Atlanta is in a position that they need a little bit of everything to, to steer this the, the direction of this team. And I think the first two or three picks are going to steer the direction of the team or what we think it is. If they get two defensive players and one offensive player, you kind of know where they're going. If they get two offensive players and one defensive player in the first two or three rounds, you know where they're going. So, it's not either way. I feel that it's a win-win either way, but I just feel like for some reason, this, uh, this league loves passing. They love throwing the ball down the field and you need big receivers to do so. We already picked up one from Cincinnati. Who's to say that Drake London won't be the second one. And now on top of that, you got Kyle Pitts. I would not be surprised if they try to pull this off. Uh, so 
that's just my gut feeling. Now, if they turn around and do pick a pass rusher, if they pick Kevon Thibodeau or whatever the case may be, it's still a good look because we need that player, but it kind of shifts to what we're trying to do. I feel like we're going to continue to move the ball on offense as much as we can, but clearly if they pick more defensive players in the first few rounds, you already know that with a Rashad Evans, Deion Jones, Grady Jarrett, you know, Lorenzo Carter, A.J. Terrell, those guys that are there already, you're probably looking at a situation where these guys are going to get going to follow Dean Pease's, uh, uh his mantra, run really good exotic defenses, go try to blitz, get at the quarterback. And on the flip side of that, the offense is, oh, excuse me, the offense is basically going to just try to manage the game. We're going to get a little aggressive, but it's going to be more of a, a manageable situation for Marcus Mariota. And that goes back to what I said. Marcus Mariota could be very, very efficient if he just don't turn the ball over. And I know he has a, he had an issue with that in one a, a few seasons, but if he's in a position where he just plays it safe and the defense balls out, we could go to the playoffs. And I'm not saying that just to say it because now we're looking at a team that was, uh, what was we four and I, I can't remember what, no seven. I'm sorry, we were seven and ten, and you know, we get a couple of breaks. We could be back in the playoffs. So I don't look at this team as somebody, a team that's a lower tier. I think we're a little bit, at least average. And with the picks that we're going to come in to get, I think the first two or three picks in the first or second round, for, uh, pretty much first, second round is going to tell us where we're going. What happens if we get a quarterback? Okay, we go for a quarterback. That doesn't throw everything in 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 a, in a uh, tizzy. But I do feel that that quarterback is going to be um, slated to start very soon, especially if you get him in the first, you know, or the second round, especially the first round. So it, it's a situation where we know what these guys want to do. They want to win football games. But we also know what we don't know is how they want to win football games. Because last year, I don't think we got everything that we were looking for out of Arthur Smith. Not as a coach. We already found out that this is a um the quarterback. Um we knew that the quarterback that they that they had on the team, Matt Ryan, is somebody that they didn't want. You know, so we also know that there are some situations where uh, some players that was around just didn't fit what they're trying to do. So they're 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 trying to, you know, put this team in a situation where it's the focus on what this coach want to do. The talent that's out there is based on what Terry Fontenot wants to look into. And at, and, and at the end of the day, this may be meaning that the, this basically means that wherever they go with this is going to solidify a lot of doubts or affirmations for a lot of fans. And I don't know if we're ever going to be prepared for that because for us, you know, as fans, we always feel like we need to know and we should know and we should be uh, on it as much as the GM and the, and the, and the coach are. Um, but unfortunately, we just don't. We don't know what's going on with this draft. We kind of don't even know where they're, where they're looking at. I've heard some rumblings that Drake London, Kevon Thibodeau, Matt Corral, you know, all these guys in the first couple of rounds, uh, Desmond Ritter. Sauce Gardeners have actually been uh, um, out there as well. So what you're looking at is uh, a draft class that is pretty much wide open with talent, with a team with the Atlanta, with the Atlanta Falcons that could use talent in, in, in a various wide open areas on the team. So this is a scenario where you really don't know. You really don't know what's going on here. And I feel that, it's going to cause a lot of excitement for the draft. Um, you also feel that uh, there could be a lot of trades. I already told you what I feel about the trade at the second round. I feel like they're going to try to get back in the first round. And that would not be a bad bad idea because then you can actually get, you know, another player in the second round that's actually worth, worth, worth that pick. And, you know, uh, and uh, you probably could um, – what I'm about to say, I got just I just lost train of thought. 
not only that you can move into the first round, also then you can really show where your direction of your team is going. And I think that's something that a lot of us want to know because once we got rid of Matt Ryan, we don't know what's going to happen with this team. We just had no idea. So um, it, it, it it's pretty much exciting. And I just don't want people to feel like they can't, you know, uh, I don't want people to feel like they, they, they is is not okay to not know. It's okay to not know because it creates that excitement in the draft. And for us, we need to find a way to continue to uh, be engaged. And I know with this new regime, uh, they're going to find a way to, to keep us engaged. I think they've already done that for the most part with the changes that they made. So at the end of the day, I feel like this this draft, it means a lot for both of these guys. This right here, it's not like a make or break season. I think they're going to be around for a minute. But it just now it just really shows you what they're capable, what, it's going to show you what their vision is for the Falcons. Will it be a situation where we have a game manager, a quarterback, and a, st- and a stingy defense? Will the defense be bend, don't break? while we are trying to be aggressive on offense. You know, you really don't know. And that's one of the beauties about it. You know, I just feel like when you get to the first couple of, I I think when you get the first couple of picks, pretty much like the first round pick at number eight, and maybe that second pick, you you start to get an idea of what these guys are going to do in that that's going to be basically create their legacy. Their legacy is not necessarily on uh, Kyle Pitts. You know, it, I I don't believe that. It's not necessarily on a Richie Grant. You know, yes, a part of it. But when you're considering what has happened when these guys first came in and pretty much the whole team pretty much transferred transformed on itself because you have a new coach. Now, after that one year, now you can really see, okay, these guys are more prepared. They're ready to go with when it comes to the draft. What type of vision or what type of team that they're trying to make up? And um, like I said, whether it be a wide receiver or a pass rush, or whatever the case may be, you're going to get to see what they're going to do, and it's going to be really, really interesting to to, to figure that out. Um, I, I I can't wait to see how this how this plays out. I'm going to be sitting back watching. I'm not going to do a live stream of the draft. I'm going to sit back and watch. Give me my opinions on Twitter so you can follow me on Twitter at VFBaller. And we'll just go from there as far as who they pick. And I'll give you some commentary, brief commentary. May do a short video. Depends on how I feel uh, after, you know, depends on who gets picked. And I also will figure out um, how to work on the next episode of this podcast because depending on who gets picked, I can sit there and say, okay, Kevon Thibodeau is one way and talk about that. But then what happens if a receiver gets picked? You know, is it, what happens if a quarterback gets picked? And every What if they trade back? It's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out because I have no idea. And I, I, I'm just here for it. I can't wait to see it. If you like this commentary, hit the like button, share this commentary, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, I am can be found on Google um uh apple podcast stitcher uh on spotify and anchor also i am on youtube and rumble if you want to look at listen to the audio side of things also you can donate to the channel just hit the link down in the description let me know what you guys think about what this draft means for these guys i think these guys are going to be in a situation where they're going to um uh really show their hand going forward because the first year I, i'm not saying it don't count but they were you know they had to deal with a lot of stuff with some of the older people who were there, some, you know, how the, you know, players react to this type of coaching. Cause it's, cause coach Arthur Smith coaching is a little unique, but now with that second year, you really going to get to see what they're going to do. I can't wait to see how this goes. So I'm going to get out of here. You guys enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Um, can't wait to see what happens on the draft. I think it's going to be really good times. All right, y'all. I'll take it easy. Y'all be blessed. Peace.